face in Missouri. What do you expect to see from them? You know, uh, I'll start to dive into them tonight. Um, honestly, like right now, all my focus is on our players and our team and helping them. Um, you know, I think we do a really good job scouting. I, I do, and we'll get to that. I think uh, Coach Jackson, you know, some people have familiarity uh, with him around here because he was at Southern. Uh, very good coach, um, very intelligent. Um, I've said this before, you know, uh, teams with first year coaches, there's kind of like an innocence to that first year and connection, I think, that's strong. And it appears that they have that. I mean, they swept Florida two weeks ago, got a win at Georgia. Um, so I expect a great challenge. Never played there before. Uh, so don't know a whole lot of what to expect about the environment and those types of things. Um, so we'll get there early and, and dig into that. Are you familiar with Carrick at all? I met him this year for the first time at the uh, SEC coaches meeting is the first time. I obviously knew who he was, knew he was a really good coach and uh, a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, the AD that was there, I, I do know she's not there anymore, but really good at hiring coaches and no surprise she picked him. Without knowing him, can you speak to maybe the journey that he's been on starting with the swag? Pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you look at his, his baseball experiences, they're very uh, – very diverse, however you want to say it. And, um, you know, just in the short interaction that I had with him, you know, came away really impressed and, you know, just talked to coaching for a few minutes and how things were there. And, you know, obviously we're competitors, so didn't really elaborate on like a plan or anything, but you could tell. And, you know, uh, I don't say a whole lot in those uh, SEC coaches meetings, to be honest with you. Um, but, I mean, he was jumping right into the conversation and it's a very impressive guy. Last week, I think you talked about just making it, I don't know, let's say simplifying yeah. the process, but you're you know, breaking it down to accomplishing your goal per inning. Yeah. Did you feel like that took root? Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's really uh, an interesting dynamic uh, evaluating this thing right now. Um, you know, obviously, we're the defending or reigning national champions, certainly a high standard. I do believe we have good players. Um, you know, the, the schedule's been tough, like, and, you know, we expect to win every game that we play, but it's it's been tough, and so you have to kind of look at it as, like, the play and the game, and yet, you know, the opponents that we've played, you know, particularly on the road, I think they're two and three or whatever, and they made it, make it hard in some areas of the game. Looking back at last weekend, the positives, obviously, I thought, uh, we were much better from a starting pitching perspective. I thought Gage did a good job. Uh, it didn't help him on defense because we were trying to ignite a little bit of offense. Uh, I thought Luke was exceptional, obviously. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, Griffin, you know, gave up the hit, but then, you know, kind of did what he's done the rest of the time out of the pen. Um, I thought Nate did a nice job on Sunday. I mean, that was not a friendly place to pitch on Sunday. And out of the bullpen, I mean, just some of our more talented guys, it's starting to take as, as skill you can use in the game. And, and we're going to keep going to those guys. And um, I thought last night's game, the pitchers did a really good job, like really good job. And some of those guys needed a good outing last night and um, was very happy about that. Uh, offensively, I still think um, we have a lot, lot to do better. And, um, you know, but really – for what we're moving with with the team is we're going to be incredibly positive. We're going to communicate really well and, and be really consistent, you know, with them and what we're trying to do because they, they really, the players need that right now. Um, just one of those pitchers, uh, Aiden Moffitt, um, what did you like about his two guys last week? I love everything about him. I, if you, and I know you've been following, but if you've followed our team at all, like I'm constantly trying to get him out there. Uh, because the upside is so great that he doesn't have to be perfect and he can still get outs. And what has been the problem is two outs and two strikes getting us off the field. Like that's the different, that's why we are where we are is we're not hitting with runners in scoring position, which I've made some adjustments to try to take some of the pressure off of the team. Um, with that, uh, as best I can in, in terms of what we're doing, and on the pitching side, like, we have to get off the field. Like, I mean, it happened the other day. It's like we get to two strikes, we give up a three-run homer to Christian Moore. Well, then Tommy immediately comes up and hits a two-run homer. Now, 
the pitching matchup might not have been the same if the game is four to three ver or three to two as opposed to six to two. But let's say it all stays the same. Now we have the lead with six outs to to get if we get off the field. And I mean that's one example of many examples. I mean you know we were ahead in the sixth and we didn't get off the field. Um, and so it's like the the inflection points in the game. You know, it, it's just, it's really easy. You can go back to all of them. I mean, we had the lead at Arkansas in all three games. Now it's in the fifth inning, fourth inning, whatever. So does that really a lead, you know, on the road in the SEC? But um, just being better in, in those tipping point moments in the game. And, again, I know it's a midweek game, but we won all of them last night. I mean, we're, we had a lead. We walked a guy in the eighth inning, immediately got a double play. Completely changes the game. Like if you're watching like the – is it win probability? Is that what they do on ESPN? Like, I love watching that in, like, football. Like, um, but, like, the, as you see it in the baseball games, and, like, it, like, would have shot way down and then shot way up. Like, we just need to be better at those points. And um, there's a lot of reasons why I think that we haven't, but just going forward, like, trying to win those. In terms of getting off the field with two outs, uh, is it just – is one of the reasons why you want to teach Cam and Aiden more in those scenarios because of just the fact that they have explosive yeah season. yeah they're gonna pitch from this point forward and um you know they're Ada and I told him at the beginning of the year like we, we needed more strikes but like I'm going to get you in there when I can and we did the first couple weeks and then you know Houston was just like a was probably our best week of the year it just it didn't happen and um and not that we lost track of it, but then when we came back, um, we had three tight games against Xavier. And then we got him in that midweek against North Dakota State, and we've pitched him every week, you know, since then. And, um, you know, I think it's interesting. Like, he may still walk a guy, but he can, he can get them out. He doesn't have to be perfect because the fastball's so great. Then it became land the slider. Okay, you land the slider with the fastball that you have, with that you're starting to throw more strikes. Now you're going into SEC games. So he pitched twice this weekend. Pitched great on Friday night. Thought he pitched good on Sunday. Christian Moore, great player. I mean, I think I told somebody, I think I told you, like, I mean, like, I'd love to have that guy on our team. Like, um, you know, on a small ballpark, you know. But other than that, he was outstanding. And um, one of the key players, uh, if not one of the most key players on our team for the rest of the season and moving forward. Over the years, Coach, when things haven't gone your way, what do you have to yourself yeah no doubt um you know and, and a couple of weeks ago i actually said this like you know this has been such a great program like you don't you wonder if they ever had a tough stretch like honestly like um you know it's, it's always been a lot of good fortune and um so i feel like hey you know what i'm actually equipped to this because I almost made the ncaa tournament one year with a team that had a 6-3-6 era that was not easy, you know, and it was very similar where I think UCLA was number one. We had to play them on the road. Arizona State was number three. We had to play them on the road. Now the Pac-12 has changed a lot in the last three years. Um, but we got through that, and we won 13 of our last 14 games. That, <clears throat> excuse me, 13 out of our last 14 games that year, and then staying with it. So kind of what I've just come to is like, what do these players need right now? It doesn't matter what Jay Johnson thinks we should do. Like, what do they need and how to help them? And that is my entire, entire focus. And, um, you know, I'm having a lot of player meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings today. I'm actually, this is a 15-minute break in it. I've been going since 9, and I'm going to go till practice, then I'll go after practice and then meet with everybody else once we get to Missouri um, to try to help those guys out. But are you prone to work more hours than humanly possible? You know, I try to keep the, if you preach like process, you can't change with the winning and losing. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite, you know. Um, you a little more tired when you lose, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, we'll stay with it, you know. Like, like I said, I mean, not where we want to be. You know, it, we are where we are. Um, like I said, there's a lot of things you can go back and look at. But what we can't control is what we have in front of us and you know that's what i really need them to do and um so um trying to meet them where they're at you know and um and get them in a better direction again like we want to win the games but aiden moffitt super positive cam 
super positive. Uh, the starters last weekend gave us a chance to win. And with that team that we played, like offensively, they have a vibe that we had last year. Like it feels like it's their time offensively. You know what I mean? Amick transferred like Tommy did, you know? Moore's played for three years. Burke's played for three years. Those guys are battling it out to be the all-time home run leader at Tennessee. I mean, Inslee had a home run against us in the College World Series. Stark was the starting catcher. And so, uh, tears, you know, dryling. Like, you could see how good those guys were, were going to be last year, you know. That's a lot of firepower, you know. Um, so, I'm really pleased with the pitching kept us in the game. I thought we were great until the seventh inning on Sunday, on the mound. Like Friday, defensively, it was, you know, we made three basically defensive mistakes that led to three of their six runs. Played better defense the next two days, pitched good, and then, you know, that ballpark, that lineup, to hold them down for 27 innings was gonna be hard, you know, and, um, but I think a real positive direction in terms of how we pitched last midweek at Tennessee and this midweek. You mentioned Aiden's slider and landing that thing for strikes. Like, how does that pitch sort of improve, not just with strikes? I think just experience, like getting them out there. And, you know, um, I'm really proud of him, you know, for sticking with it. And um, I think it shows ability where it's been like, hey, you need to do this to get to this. You need to do this to get to this. And he's like graduated like different levels of that to now it's like it might be four to two on friday and you're probably going to see him roll out there you know what i mean type thing and uh that's pretty awesome does he have a change up too um work work in progress and when it's good it's really good okay yeah when it's good it's really good this is one pitch that was 91 like, that, that is a change up yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah when it's good it's really good okay. and uh he, I want to say it was against Louisiana Tech. It was Louisiana Tech or Southeastern. Um, threw a really good one. So it's in there, and that's the next phase, and that's getting him to be a starter, you know, and once that, once that clicks. So, again, like these are all thought-out things, and uh, it shows his ability and his drive that he's, he's, you know, advancing over the hurdles. It seems like the changeup is just the pitch that you guys are trying to develop with a whole bunch of different guys, and that's not just with your program. That's probably with of other college programs like what makes well, that pitch so tough well to I, I would, what i'll t say is it, it's not like it's putting it in the hitter's head that it's in there and it's not so much about getting outs with it even though you do get outs with it like greg maddox made a hall of fame career you know with the good change up but it's also about getting them off your fastball so the ball that ends up in the seats turns into a foul ball or just a miss hit maybe fly ball out and so it also gives you the weapon to get through the order three times and it's like that's a tough ask in the SEC. That's a tough ask, you know. I mean, Paul's really the only guy that's been able to do it since we got here, you know. Um, you know, Luke has done it a few times, you know, this year and uh, has done a great job. But I think it's more about putting it in the hitter's head, getting him off the fastball. Like, you'll see teams do it to Tommy. Like, in a fastball count, they'll throw the change just to see if he doesn't recognize it and get him to swing to either tip the count or get weak contact. But then maybe it's also being used to, you know, make the fastball play up if they go back to it later in the at-bat. I know you've um, talked about how so much of this is just player-oriented and just trying to get those guys in a, in a better headspace. Mm -hmm. Is part of that have anything to do, I guess, with maybe having like a two- or three-minute conversation about what's still attainable in this season? Or do you Yeah, know you know, that? like <laughs> we've done a lot of stuff, you know, and, and, and I tried to – I want to say this was this was Sunday against Vanderbilt, which was going to be a tough game. It was a friggin' brutal loss Friday night, easily the worst one of the year. That in Florida tied for first. Um, Sunday or Saturday, I think it was Saturday, came in for game three, and I was like, okay, look, like here's what we need to do to play in the postseason. And then I drew out the entire schedule, and then it's like, okay, then you're going to a regional where you're not playing a team from our league. I think we're going to win, like, honestly. Like, this, there's 12 teams, maybe 13, maybe 14 in our league that could win a regional. The problem is we're playing all of them, and just the way the schedule, we're playing the top half of them. It's just the way that it worked out. It's, no, it is what it is. So we got to step up, find a way to get through this stretch. We've been great outside of the league. I think we're 20 and 3. There's not many teams in the country that are 20 and 3 non-conference. Um, so we kind of went to that. 
but then it's about knowing what's best for your team. Like, and what's best for a team is getting them like, hey, man, they have the support of our coaches. We're going to keep trying to, like, dial in their play and keep them in the moment. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think at that point I felt like after a tough loss, like they needed to have some hope of what was still out there. But it still comes back to baseball. And then, like, this is a tough, tough weekend. That was a tough weekend this weekend. And it um, doesn't mean all was bad, but, you know, it's a team that's it's their time right now. I can put Arkansas on the same boat. It's, it's their time. We're not that far away, and yet we're far away. And what I mean by that is, like, um, there's some optimism in going, like, if a team is at that point and you're playing them on the road and you're the defending champ and you're getting everything they have, I mean, you eliminated them in Omaha. You're getting everything that they have, that there were some wins right there. So then how do you get over the hump? It comes back to baseball, and it comes back to those inflection points, and it comes back to helping guys be in tune with what they need to do to execute. And right now, like, they need my support. Like, they, they do, and that's what they're going to get. You talked about Jackson being a first-year head coach and not really knowing what to see. They're 7-3 and three in the month of April. What mm -hmm. do you think is kind of – I know you're doing yeah. more scouting. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I'm familiar with a couple of their pitchers. Um, uh, Carter Rustad, um, he pitched here against us a couple of years ago. I really liked him out of the bullpen. That's a good curveball. I'm surprised he's still in college, actually. I uh, thought he would have been on to pro baseball right now. Uh, Javen Pimentel pitched for me at Arizona um, my last year and um, has done a nice job. Left-hander, multiple pitches, tough arm angle. So I think they're getting decent starting pitching. And I think in the wins, it appears like they've gotten the big hit, you know. Um, and they're playing with good belief. And uh, that kind of goes back to that first-year thing. And, and they're probably really good at home, you know. So um, that would be the things that I would probably expect. What, kind of out of nowhere, but Will Helmers uh, is a guy that probably wasn't thought of as yeah. being a big contributor, but you've been using him all from this year. Like, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, uh, we changed his arm angle. We changed some things relative to helping him become a little more deceptive. He's strong. I mean, he's 22 years old now. I mean, he ripped off a 96-mile-an-hour fastball last night from, like, right here. Like, there's not many guys on the planet that can do that. Um, so it's really cool. You know, uh, was not on the roster in Omaha last year, but he was the first guy in the extra spots in the dugout. Like, I almost listed him as, like, a coach because that's how important he is to the team dynamic. Like, um, and uh, it's really good to see that. Like, he's a great kid. He's a hard worker. Uh, playing here means a lot to him. Um, you know, we don't have a ton of guys that have been here for all three years, and I've never one day thought of, like, is this guy not totally invested in what we're trying to do? And then to stay with it and see him become a real contributor, be on the roster in SEC every weekend, um, and have success, like, one of the better things that's happened this year. Um, Hunt made a good point that I hadn't thought about until he made it. It was just kind of the implosion of the Pac-12 that really made the SEC that much tougher with the portal and people being able to kind of just come right away. Have you seen that? I mean, is that a real thing? Is that why we're seeing the conference be as good as it is? That's a lot. Um, <laughs> you don't have to speak to the <laughs> I had a travel coach. I had a travel coach blame me for that, like leaving to come here, um, like uh, which is not true. Um, and I'm not even deflecting, but it's a way bigger deal. And Nate went to Texas A&M and then came here. Um, people care more out here. Like that's just it is what it is. There's more resources. Um, I noticed in COVID. Um, I noticed a big shift in COVID. Like recruiting changed a lot. Uh, we couldn't have campus visits. That was like over like 18 months. Like we couldn't bring somebody to campus. And we were always battling. Stanford was going to get the Stanford guy. UCLA was going to get the Orange County, North LA guy. But we were going to be on on every other player. And then we needed to beat Oregon, Oregon State, um, Arizona State, and put together good rosters. Well, during COVID, what I did notice is some of the elite high school guys were now starting to fly over us and come out here. And then it made it like, okay, wait, I can battle these two schools, but I can't battle these 10 and those two schools and, and make sure we're an Omaha program. So I think that shifted a little bit. But the bottom line is like one 
conference did it right with the TV and the SEC network and aligning with ESPN and got resources and one did it wrong and it was its undoing and my athletic director at the time <laughs> who's now an athletic director in the SEC he called the whole thing he's like this is not good like I'm talking like nine years ago like I mean it's just how it goes like you know you, you either reap the rewards of hard work and good decisions over a long period of time which you know Commissioner Sankey did and that deal didn't go very good and um, it's affected all the sports and then you know I'll be honest like I'm Thursday night before I got here I'm preparing for you know whoever Washington State and then you got a game if there's an SEC game on TV on Thursday night and um, it's just this is not college baseball anymore this is on a completely different plan there's other good teams out there Oregon State great team Florida State great team Clemson great team all respect for those coaches this is just on a week in a week out basis it's it's different is, about okay. uh, is, is your sport more than any other something happens and it causes a chain reaction like, in a game well to turn around a season or the you know momentum <clears throat> it seems like you know your sport teams can struggle and then they just go on a tear yeah good question um i think the nature of it um in the SEC is everybody has really good players. So it's getting hard to win, but if, if they play good, yeah, you can get some, some positive momentum going. I've always believed in baseball. That has to do with the guy that's starting on the game on the mound that day. And, um, you know, it's like every time Luke takes the mound, our team feels like we're going to win, you know? And, um, so it's tough to lose, uh, last Saturday where we have a run in and we have two guys on with nobody out and don't score. Um, and then you're just you're leaving it to one, one pitch, one play, and they got the big hit, and so you have to credit uh, them for that. Um, I really think it has to do with that, but let's let's be honest too. Like as human beings, like um, whether I don't want them to like succumb to their feelings or whatnot, like that's a real thing. And if they're stepping in the box with a clear mind, total confidence because we've had some success, and it eliminates a lot of the crap and then you get the best. And then it starts to create whatever, contagious hitting. There is something to it, you know? I've, I've leaned to it, it's about like the play in that day, but the mindset has a lot to do with the play. And if you believe you're gonna win and you believe you're gonna be successful, you got a chance. You if you know, don't, you have no chance. You don't necessarily need a raccoon to run out on the field. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. hey, if, if that works, you know, um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now, but yeah, I'll go, I'll go, wrangle some up outside the river and bring them over here and turn them loose on the field. Yeah, hey. So this might be a little random, but I'll ask it anyways. You talked about Will Helmers, it meaning more to him yeah. being from Louisiana, yeah. playing here. Last year you yeah. had a plethora of Louisiana yeah. talent. Yeah. Do you think that has played a factor of this year of losing guys like Trey Morgan and Cade? And well, I would say. It has more to do with losing the player that they developed into, um, you know, and, and taking some of those guys' best qualities. Trey, one of the best competitors I've ever met. Like, I was actually, like, probably harder on him than any player because, like, I believed in him so much because he time and time again showed, like, he was going to come through. Like, if he ever gave in a bad away, it's like, come on, man. Like, you're better than that. We know you're better than that because you're on it. I mean, Cade developed into this great hitter. Um, but pride in your performance and pride in, you know, what you're doing, that's a real thing. And um, those guys definitely had that. And um, I think numbers wise, I don't know that we're a ton different as far as in-state kids on the roster than we were last year. It's within two or three. If It's not some like um, big number. I think it has to do with, you know, losing those guys that developed into like these great players at this level. And that, that happens. Like, I mean, it's a record of, of number of players drafted out of the SEC, not out of LSU. Um, and when you lose those guys and lose that great dynamic of leadership, um, you know, and if it wasn't for injuries, Cade and Gavin might not have been here. If it wasn't for COVID, they might not have been here, you know. So sometimes you need some good fortune. And um, But I do think it's more of having pride in performance and um, pride in what you're really doing and, and being connected to that. And there's a lot of ways to get there and do that. And we got to keep, keep fighting that. And right now, like, you know, a coaching staff, super positive, super engaged, 
with them, behind them, supporting them. My mandates are they respect each other and like they just let go a little bit in the game. And like when we get to those key points, you know, give it everything that they got. When you're trying to evaluate a guy's performance or trying to develop a lineup, how much are you, are you looking at the trackman numbers at all from the previous weekend or previous games or any of that sort of stuff? Yeah, we look at everything. Um, pitcher strength, where they're at today, uh, opponent, um, what matches up, what lines up good, um, where the player is right now mentally, you know, is, is super important. Um, and all of that. So um, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just, say, flip a coin and what's what, you know, so. Are you getting anything from your numbers on uh, you guys on the game? Yeah, I think um, the runner at third with less than two outs thing is just a little down, not far as you would think, but that's what I said. Like, I'm trying to do way more to get them to third with less than two outs. Um, so we don't need a hit. And that was what was the frustrating thing about Saturday's game was we didn't need a hit twice and we didn't get them in. Um, you know, with, it's, it's no secret that's been a struggle. You don't get pitched the same way um, with runners on base. Like, that's part of it. And, you know, we're just talking about some old players um, last year. Like, they'd been through enough of those to understand it, to drill it. To, I mean, literally, like, in the last game of the year last year, like, I put up a video of us getting – two out RBI hits, like, hey, man, like, this is, like, what we do. So this little struggle we're going through, like, let's just go back to this. And we were phenomenal in that, in that game. And sometimes it just takes a couple, you know, like Stephen Milam got one on Sunday, and um, that was great to see. And, uh, you know, Tommy last night, two-strike RBI single with a man on third, hit a ground ball to third with the middle back, and he's the best hitter that, that we have, you know. So that was great, you know, to, to see that. And, um, it's, you know, the Augie Garrido thing, you know, two out hitting, that's going to, that's going to win. And this might be a little bit obvious so a question to, at least to a degree, but, um, how important do you think is, you know, just having that more athletic stance and less of the leg kick is for a hitter? Because it seems like you guys aren't huge on, you know, these, any of these big sort of leg kicks or anything like that. No, um, but we have our, our way and, um, you know, I'll take uh, Dylan as an outlier a little bit, but if you look at, um, he even moved towards it a little bit, you know what I mean? And if you watch some of his at-bats, like in pro baseball, I, I haven't seen anything from this year, but last year it's like he's kind of into, into that same mode. Um, Tommy with two strikes. Um, you know, the running joke with those guys was like, if you just did this all the time, you would never, you would hit like 600 in college baseball. <laughs> and those guys are special. Like they, they're on, there's a little bit more wiggle room because you can quickly see how different they are. And both of them came into this thing way more prepared and with talent. So there's a little more leeway uh, in there. Um, I just, I believe in kind of a way that works and, and it works in college baseball and it makes you less pitchable. And, and, and I've said this before, we have some guys that, you know, have a lot of power that, you know, aren't quite the elite hitter just yet. Doesn't mean that they won't get there, but just yet. And that's been like a backwards like thing for me of like, hey, good hitter, as you get stronger, as you get older, develop into some of that power and not have to sell out to get to the power um, and not quite as much boom or bust. Trey and Cade would be two guys I would like, it was a perfect fit. Like coming here with those guys and just a couple tweaks, um, because they had really high-end hitting ability. And then they developed into some, some power. And so um, that's just an ongoing, ongoing thing. But no, you're, you're on top of that. Like, I'm not into the, you know, I'm not into the leg kick thing, yeah. All right, a wrap up with Jay, anything else? Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Thanks.